Hello, I'm Suzanne Byron with Strawberry Moon Catering. We're at Lynchburg, Tennessee for 2022 barbecue. And tonight we're having lemon rosemary chicken, fried catfish, moon beans, mashed potatoes, squash casserole, coleslaw, and assorted dessert bars. How many people do you expect? We're expecting 600 people tonight. Is that all? That's it. Just a Take handful. A <laughs> You're going to put them all in a little bit of space in here. Yes. We're going to get close. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. But I, I don't want to do that anymore. I've been there and done that too many times. That's plenty of generic. But I can't play for you out of tune. All my buddies will hear it. I'll catch you real time about that. Well, you look like you can stand a little. I can. <laughs> All banjo players have to be thick skinned. <laughs> You have my permission to record me, and that was just a generic banjo run. I'll attribute it to anybody but me, and I'm Jeff Cates from Fayetteville, Tennessee, and I'm part of 90 Proof Bluegrass, which is kind of the bluegrass band on call for Jack Daniels. Tell us a little bit more about it. Well, we play a whole lot of events up here on the hill to a lot of different people. We've probably played for people from just about every country in the world. Of course, a whole, whole lot of them from the southeast. But uh, this place is this place is fantastic, and this week is fantastic. Uh, it's just not a nicer place. There's not a nicer facility. Uh, it's a cool place for a banjo player to get to come. It really is. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's just. I don't know. There's a feeling this week with the music and the and the fellowship. I mean, there's so many fine people here. We've met New York City firemen. We've met people in the alcohol business. We've met people in the music industry. I mean, we met nine eleven firemen up here one year. And you talk about a special bunch of guys. They were a special bunch of guys. Uh, it's just, uh, and we're looking forward to this show. He's uh, he's a very he's a very 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 good performer. We heard this guy last year, and he's really good, really good. But uh, guys I play with are just fantastic guys to be around. Uh, of course, I have to, the mandolin player is my little brother. I have to put up with him. Uh, we have Larry Gross on fiddle, Timmy Blankenship on guitar, Lauren Wilde on bass, uh, Tyler Anderson on dobro. Uh, most of these boys, we watched them grow up. We watched them learn to play music. Uh, we're twice their age for the most part, so. These young guys, me and Timmy and me and Timmy and Larry here are kind of the kind of the veterans in the bunch. Uh, and then Lauren is a is a transplanted Canadian who is as fine a bass player as I have ever played with. He is very, very good. Four string? Five string. Five He's playing string. a five string bass. He sure is. He's playing a headless five string bass. And we're always picking on him about tuning it. He says, Well it never needs tuning. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what drove you to the banjo? Uh, deliverance. I heard doing the banjos as a kid. That would have been, I might have been 13, 14 years old. And I'd already seen the Beverly Hillbillies. And, of course, I saw them play. And, and actually, the Beverly Hillbillies with Flat and Scruggs, most banjo players of my generation, that was their first exposure to the banjo. But uh, then I, I veered off and... I played electric guitar for several years and played blues, which I still love blues. But uh, my youngest brother got me into bluegrass about 30 years ago, and I, I've played ever since and played banjo. You travel? Some, yeah, we, we travel pretty much within a 100, 150 mile radius or so. We play Nashville, Franklin area some, but a lot of events here, here local for Jack mainly. It keeps you busy. Oh yeah, 
Pretty much, I sure do. Yeah, a combination of Jack playing some parties, you know, playing some, some private events. Of course, we get called on to play a few festivals, but they're all pretty local. They're all around here. Uh, we're really busy this weekend. I think we've got four gigs this weekend for Jack. So, wow. so we're pretty busy this weekend. Now, what do you do to pay your bills? I'm a welder. I own a welding shop. I'm trying my best to retire, actually, but <laughs> it ain't happened yet. What kind of welding do you do? I'm actually a, a stainless and aluminum guy. I do a lot of TIG wow. welding, a lot of stainless, a lot of aluminum. I've got stuff in space, and I've got stuff in mines. So it's pretty much from, from underground to space. Uh, I've been lucky over the years. I've gotten to weld some really interesting stuff, and uh, some, some, a lot, a lot of military stuff. I've done tons of military parts. And as far as working at, at the ink pen factory in Shelbyville, Tennessee, I've done a lot of welding for National Pen. So, uh, you know, I mean, it's, Larry and I work together a lot, so it's, it's you know, it's, uh, it's kind of like brothers working together. We don't fight like brothers, but kind of like brothers working together. One of us, one of us thinks something, the other one already knows. <laughs> and we both grew up in the trade. Larry's a machinist and a welder, and I'm a welder and uh, sort of a halfway machinist, but we think alike, so we work well together. Now, Timmy, the guitar player, ain't nobody work with him. <laughs> he has to work with his brother. Oh, okay. But our bass player's retired. My brother, my youngest brother's contractor. He's the mandolin player. Uh, Tyler Anderson, the dobro player, is a cattle farmer from Manchester, Tennessee. And then Timmy feed this mash to his cows? Uh, no, no, no. They don't feed. I don't think they feed mash at all, do they? But and then Timmy, the guitar player and singer, finishes Jack Daniel's barrels for Kevin Sanders. That's what he does for a living. So, He'd be in business for a long time. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Kevin wanted to know when I came through Lynchburg, he was sitting out on the porch and he said, have y'all found a guitar player yet? And I said, no, we're still looking. And for a banjo player too. And that's his favorite joke. <laughs> Kevin's a fine fellow. We play a lot of stuff for Kevin. Uh, like I said, you know, a lot of stuff up here. But uh, it's fun to play the banjo. The banjo's a banjo's a happy instrument. It makes people smile. It does. And that's what I like. I, I enjoy that. Now, of the three bills, which do you prefer? Of the three Monroes? The three bills. One one is a Monel. That looks to be a Monel ring. And a brass ring and an open back. No, now this is a this is a tone ring banjo. And this one actually is a conversion from a tenor, which would be a four string. Yeah. This neat this neck was built by Frank Neat in Cave Springs, Kentucky. And he built it for this pot, which is what you call this heavy round part here. But this one started out as a raised head, which is an arch top. Arch tops have a very thin sound, which is what Ralph Stanley played. Ralph played an arch top, but Ralph got a real thin, high endy sound. These are a little deeper. These got they got more growl. You'd have to play these way back next to the bridge to get that tinny sound, which most of us don't do. But of course, we all want to be Earl Scruggs. Well, there wasn't but one Earl Scruggs, and there never will be another. J.D. Crow was mighty close. J.D., of course, is Earl and J.D. are both, they've both passed on. Bill Emerson was a fine banjo. He ins inspired us all. Uh, I was inspired by a guy that actually lived over a place called Bunker Hill, Tennessee. His name's James McKinney. And uh, I took a few lessons from James, and he really, he really broadened my knowledge, but he opened up my mind to new things. He said, Jeff, if it works and you can make it fit, you can do it. And it really helped to be around him and be a social because he's a he's a world class banjo player, but uh, but I like a flathead and and I play most of the time a mahogany banjo. Uh, I'm actually looking into a curly maple, which is a little different sound. Seems the mahogany's might be a little softer. The curly maples have got a little more bite, but uh, there's so many factors in a banjo. I mean, it's so much of it is set up. This head can be tightened. So some people like a loose head for a more thunky, sort of a throaty sound. Some people like crack, and that's me. I like that banjo to, I want that banjo to crack. I want to have that, that bite and crack, which, you know, that's, that's what I like. And that's the thing about a banjo. They're so personal. 
and they're so easy to they're so easy to change the sound. You change the neck material, the sound will change. You change the tone rings, and there's two dozen good tone ring makers. Myself, I favor I favor a Huber ring made in Hendersonville, Tennessee, and Steve is a friend, Steve Huber, and I actually have a banjo that Steve built, and I wish I was you know I wish I had it with me tonight, but I don't. I've just got my Gibson tonight, but this banjo seems on stage to mic a little better. It's got plenty of volume, and it, you know, it'll give you what you ask for. It, it's, it's got it, I mean, it really does. Anything else you want to leave with us this evening? Other than welcome to Lynchburg, everybody. Uh, you know, it's so good to have everybody here. Everybody has a good time this week. Uh, I want everybody to have a good time this week. Hope they enjoy our music. We'll do the best we can. And we thank y'all. Thank you, guys.